Welcome to this week's edition of Good Books Radio. Audiobooks.com is the chief underwriter for Good Books Radio, which is produced by UTRGV Media Services for Rio Grande Valley Public Radio. And now, here's your host, Dr. W.F. Strong. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a new edition of Good Books Radio. I'm your host today, Dr. W.F. Strong, and I'm glad that you could join us because you're going to learn about how to make money and save money. We're going to learn from Grant Sabatier about his new book, Financial Freedom, The Proven Path to All the Money You Will Ever Need. Welcome, Grant. How are you this morning? I'm good. Glad to be here. Well, listen, uh, this is quite a claim, The Proven Path to All the Money You Will Ever Need. That's probably the most astounding claim I've ever seen in a financial book. So how do you justify yeah. that? <laughs> I think the important thing to note, there's one one shift. It's a proven path. It's not the, the proven path. <laughs> yeah, it's a, a proven path. So it's one of what could be many. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, the book is really a step-by-step strategy that anyone can use no matter where you're at in your own financial journey uh, to make more money in less time. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a proven path in the sense that, you know, it was the path that I followed. It's a path that, you know, not many, but quite a few people that I know have also followed. Um, It's a path that's getting easier. But at the end of the day, you know, it's you have to find your your own path. This is um, simply a bunch of steps that I recommend taking on your own path. Um, with that being said, it's you know there's some things about the time that we live in, uh, you know, that make it easier to uh, ha- you know make and save all the money you'll ever need. Uh, for example, it's never been easier in history to make more money. Um, you know, there's so many ways to make money online and offline that didn't even exist, you know, 15, 20 years ago, True. low cost, high quality investing options. Um, you know, all the money I've made, I've invested through clicks on my phone, you know, the barrier <laughs> to entry and the amount of information available makes it easier. Oh, it's incredible. Um, Easier is the important word, though. It doesn't mean that it's easy. <laughs> yes, yes, you I know. understand. Well, I want to you know. I want to begin with the the very line that made me choose this book, and that line was that Grant Sabatier went from a two dollar balance in his checking account to a million dollars in five years. And I said, well, here is a guy who knows how to make money or at least knows how to save it. <laughs> so uh, how did you do that? Yeah, I think it's it's both. Making and saving are both independently important. A lot, there's quite a few people who make a lot of money, but they save nothing. Mm-hmm. And then there's people who save a relatively high amount of money, but they don't make as much as they probably could. Um, well, you know, my so, brother, I, mean, I want to tell you about my brother right quick. He was a tax attorney for... Uh, 30 years, 40 years almost, and uh, he once told me, he said, you know, if you took all the money in the world and you divided it among everybody equally, uh, he said in about five years you'd have the the money back in the hands of the people who had it to begin with, and the people who were poor would be poor again because it's about management, that uh, some people know how to manage money and some people don't. Yeah, I think we're, the way we're, you know, wired, you know, our DNA, we're we're not actually well set up to manage money. You know, our minds, for example, have a hard time comprehending large amounts of money. We're often not good at thinking, you know, we worry about the future and dream, but we're not good at planning for it. Mm -hmm. You know, so there are some things that are clearly working against us that we have to, you know, do a little bit of rewiring our brain. Um, But one of the biggest things is, is, you know, I, I think a lot of us are bad at managing money is because, you know, we've been we've been given the wrong advice. Mm-hmm. You know, we've been given a, a, a rule book that didn't even really work that well in the first place and definitely doesn't work today. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, when I was living back with my parents at the age of 24 and completely broke, you know, I made a list of those things that, you know, I'd always been told and taught. Uh, about money and my parents had told me and everyone talked about in in our society and I realized pretty quickly that a lot of those things were either a you know bad advice or you know B damaging advice 
um, things like, like, like what, like money is time mm-hmm. and time is money. Mm-hmm. We hear that every day, yes. all the time, you know, time is money, time is money. Mm-hmm. I thought that, but in reality, money, you can always go out and make more money. You, know, you can always get a side job. You can always go make more money, but you can't get back your time. Mm-hmm. Time is so much more valuable than money. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, money's infinite. Time is finite, you know, so we end up thinking that money is time. And so we trade our time for money in some cases when we don't have to or make trade-offs that we shouldn't. We stay at our office, you know, four hours later instead of going home and spending it with our kids and our families. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing, saving 5 to 10% of your income. Uh, you know, I've heard that my whole life and I did the simple math and no matter how much money you're making, saving 5% of your income, you're never going to be able to retire. It's just not enough. The math doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing, cut back, you know, cut your, cut back on your latte, cut back on, you know, your glass of wine, your small purchases. But in reality, it's those small purchases that often give us the most joy in our life. And we're told to cut them back when in reality, those are what we should be spending our money on. And where you really save money is where you spend the most money, which is, you know, the average American spends over 50% of their income on housing and transportation. Mm -hmm. That's where you get the big savings, not on those smaller little purchases. I mean, they all, it all adds up, but you know, and then the final, you know, one of the other things is, you know, there's really a limit to how much you can cut back, but we're told we need to budget and cut back, cut back, cut back. There's not really a limit to how much money you can make. Um, you can only cut back before you live like you, know, you feel like you're living in a cardboard box. And those are just <laughs> four examples. Yes. Of many. I like um, one of the points you make in the book about uh, you spend a little bit of time on people at the end of their lives and their regrets, and their regrets are often uh, focused on things that uh, may surprise many of us because they don't regret that they didn't really make more money. They regret. No, what they. Go ahead. Yeah, no, what they regret is, you know, that they didn't follow, you know, their true passion or what they wanted mm-hmm. to do mm-hmm. or that they, you know, worked too hard or they didn't live the life that they feel like they should have lived. Mm-hmm. Um, and those are all, I mean, it's like you can lump all those into one basket and, you know, living life without regret. I mean, we might all have regrets in sure. some sense, but being able to be mindful and realize that everything with money and time is a trade-off Yes, and you can make a lot more money in less time. And that, but at the end of the day, money only matters if it helps you live a life you love. Yeah. It reminds me of Joseph Campbell in the power of myth where he talked about overhearing a child, uh, you know, more or less exp- Expre- explaining to his father his wishes and what he wanted to do in life, and his father more or less told him, well, you know, that's a pipe dream. Uh, you don't get to do what you want to do. He said, look at me. I have never in all my life done what I wanted to do. I've done what I had to do. And Campbell said, that's the saddest thing I ever heard, the saddest thing that a person lived their whole life without following their bliss, without seizing on their passion and making it uh, come true or at least partly true. And so you're talking about that, about using your money to empower uh, you know, your passions. Yeah. And, and if you don't know your passions, which a lot of people don't, I didn't, during this process, I didn't know my purpose in life or my mission or my why, but sometimes you just need to save up some money to buy yourself some time and space to figure it out. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always easier in life to chase that next thing. Well, you point out in the book that there are a good number of people who have, um, you know, seized the day and they've uh, kind of, you might say, suffered early, you know, instead of living the great life, which is a tendency of uh, of all generations, I suppose, but but maybe a little more uh, pronounced in millennials, this idea of seizing the day and living the now and living right now uh, because, you know, the future's not promised, so have fun now. And so they blow all their money and have no investment for the future. And you point out how people uh, can invest uh, with, um, with uh, what's what I'm looking for? Uh, they can invest a great deal of their income early so they can retire early. Yeah, I think it's, you know, once again, it's trade-offs. Um, you know, you want to kind of find the balance between both of those things. It's mm-hmm. often... But often the balance is 
we clearly know from all the data, the balance is towards the spending everything that you're making. Yeah. And in fact, not only that, spend money that you don't have and go in debt. And so just this is about swinging the pendulum back a little bit and investing in the you that you've yet to become. Yes. And that's one of those things where I realized that every $100 that I was saving, I was buying a week of freedom in the future. <laughs> and that, that really got me hooked. It. Yes, that's a you good know, way to like, put it. I was like, or I wanted a $40,000 car. I remember this. I wanted a, this new car. Mm -hmm. And I did the math, and I was like, I'm going to have to work five more years in the future to afford mm -hmm. this. I was like, it's just not worth it. And so at the end of the day, it's like, I don't tell you what to buy or not to buy in the book. It's just like, here, here's how to be mindful and about what you're, what trade off you're making, yeah. and whether you make the trade off is up to you. Just, just go into it knowing all the facts. <laughs> you know. Yes, not, yes. Well, when I was about, uh, I, I, I had the epiphany that that you had when I was about maybe 35, when I was, you know, paying credit card debt, and I was realizing, I said, my goodness, I'm paying right now for a dinner I had in Cancun six months ago. So I'm right. all my money is going to pay for what I've already done is going for the past and I have no money for the future. And that moment in time was a very important epiphany because I I changed. I said I've got to make pay pay for the present only, not for the past and whatever extra income I have has got to invest for the future. And uh and I yeah, see a lot no of longer... a lot of young Go people ahead. particularly uh you know that are spending their time paying for the past. Yeah, the past. I mean, obviously, it's through student loan debt, mm -hmm. or um, yeah, the thing is too. It's it's a lot of people trade their time today for money, mm -hmm. but they don't. Then you know they just spend it, so they've traded their time for money, but they're not investing it. I mean, the simple fact that Warren Buffett makes $1.5 million dollars an hour, even <laughs> when he's sleeping. <laughs> You know, last year I made over forty-five dollars an hour, even when I was sleeping on my investments. Mm -hmm. And it's like I'm nowhere near the level of Warren Buffett, obviously. <laughs> but it, this principle applies. It's like yeah. when your money's invested, you no longer have to trade your time for it. Yeah. And forty-five. So like, why not? Forty-five an hour is all you need. All, yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And then the better you know yourself, like, you know, money is something we all shy away from. Mm -hmm. But it's like the more time you spend with it, the more you get to know it mm -hmm. and the less confusing and scary it becomes um well another you know, point that like, you make that i like uh, and, and a very important one is the idea that if you if you you know say i really have to have a tesla <laughs> and you wait six months then you may not really want it that badly when you've saved up enough to actually buy it or make a big down payment you say well maybe i don't need it that much yeah, that's the thing. You know, it's like the finance world is built around it's it's crazy because it's built around this idea that we don't change, mm -hmm. and we're always changing, we're always growing, we're always evolving in some way. And so, the you that wants the Tesla today, you don't know who you're going to be in six months, mm -hmm. and you probably won't. Maybe you won't want that Tesla, but if you do, then great. You've mm -hmm. waited now, buy it. Mm -hmm. But you, you, you might not want it in the future. And that, that's probably one of the most mind-blowing things in my own life that happened was I thought that, you know, I'd want to spend more money the more money I made. But the opposite is true. Mm -hmm. You know, the more money I've made, the less I tend to spend. Mm -hmm. And simply having the ability to buy something. I don't even need to buy it. Just have, mm -hmm. having the ability and the means to buy it became enough. Mm -hmm. So I could go out and buy a Tesla this afternoon, even, you know, but I, I don't just, just having that ability is sufficient. You know, mm -hmm. I don't need a Tesla. <laughs> it's weird. Well, you look at, look at Buffett. I mean, Buffett's worth $60 billion or, or more. I don't know what, it, you know, it changes all the time, but, uh, he can really, really buy anything he wants. And he lives in Omaha and the house he grew up in, he drives a Cadillac, he eats at Dairy Queen. He lives his life according to the things that truly make him happy. Yeah, exactly. There's no kind of waste in his life. Mm -hmm. um, and anyone can do that. I mean, like mm -hmm. all these levers, like mm -hmm. how much you make and save and invest and spend, 
you know, a vast majority of that you can control. Mm -hmm. And that's one of those things I see people all the time. And they're making six figures and they're stressed about money and they're like, but you look at their life and it's like, oh, the reason you're stressed is because you, you've got this $700 a month car payment <laughs> or, <laughs> yes. you know, you bought the house, the biggest house, you know, you're spending 50% of your after tax income mm -hmm. come on your mortgage payment. Mm -hmm. That's it right there. Just make those two changes. But I love my car, mm -hmm. but I love my big house. It's like, okay, mm -hmm. then realize that's why you're stressed. <laughs> it's not like it's, it's not like it's rocket science. Well, the problem with the big house too is that, uh, you know, depending where you are and all that, but uh, in many places, to have that big house, you'll have to pay 10000 a year in property taxes for the honor of living there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. In addition and to the mortgage and the insurance and the upkeep, you got this huge bill every every year just for the privilege of living in that country club and showing off. Totally. <laughs> and that's one of the things I am excited about. You know, a lot of millennials are, mm -hmm. you know, there's just so many people in the world. And so we are choosing smaller houses and mm -hmm. more creative living situations. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's a cool time to live because you can make money in so many different ways. But on the flip side, you know, you can't mm -hmm. rely, you know, my parents, you know, one of them has a pension and, mm -hmm. you know, none of that stuff's around. And so it's great to have all the freedom, but some people, you know, they, they think they want freedom, but then they don't. Well, let me just give you a scenario. Let's suppose that I'm a 30 year old, uh, college grad. I, I have a job with a tech company in, in Austin. I make 100 120000 a year, okay? Uh, unmarried, all right? And so my after-tax income, let's say, is 80000 So uh, what would you advise me to do to have, the, to have financial freedom at 40? Supposing, oh, supposing I have nothing right now. I have nothing in the bank, but I have no debt to speak of, but what do I do? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the, this is the easiest scenario in the book. So, mm -hmm. you know, high income, no mm -hmm. kids, mm -hmm. full control of your own expenses. Uh, the, the best thing, the, the most, the, the number one thing, especially a place like Austin is, you know, the first step you want to take is, uh, you know, get into house hacking, mm -hmm. which is a simple idea is like buy a three bedroom house or a three bedroom apartment in Austin mm -hmm. and then rent out the other two rooms okay. to offset or completely cover the cost of your mortgage. Mm -hmm. You know, then you have the win-win where you're using, you know, the leverage from the mortgage. So you're using someone else's, the bank's money. You're getting your two friends or someone, you know, who also works at your company to pay, you know, rent. And so mm -hmm. your mortgage, maybe it covers the cost or almost covers the cost of your mortgage. So now you're using someone else's money, you're living for free, and you have an asset that's appreciating, mm -hmm. it's like the win, win, win. And so you've cut all of a sudden your number one, ex so you have an investment that's growing and you've cut your biggest expense down to zero or very minimal. And then so instead of spending 30% or 40% of your income on housing, you're spending nothing. Then your, your savings rate, your percentage of your income that you're saving, goes from zero, it's zero, maybe you say you're starting from zero, to 40% overnight mm -hmm. just because of that one decision. Now you're saving 40% of your income. Then the next step is to look at your transportation costs. You know, Drive a used car, don't buy a new car, keep those as low as possible. Say so that's another 15% of savings. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden now you're saving maybe 50% of your income mm -hmm. and you have a 100% chance of being able to retire in 10 years or less. Once you get to that 50%, 40, 50% number, the vast majority of people in ten, can retire in 10 years or less. So do I take um, that money and uh, the extra income, do I put it in an index fund? What do I do with it? Yeah, so uh, put it in an index fund or the fastest path to financial independence, I think, is through real estate. Mm -hmm. So you can, I mean, what you want to do is, you know, you're working for a tech company, you mm -hmm. want to uh, maximize, you know, you want to max out your 401k because they'll probably have one. Mm -hmm. You want to max out, you know, at that level, you're almost at the income limit for a Roth IRA, but you want to max out your Roth, your traditional IRA. So there, there you're saving $25,000 a year in tax advantaged accounts. And you want to invest that in a total stock market index fund like VTSAX or VTI. Okay. Well, let's, um, uh, let's slow down here because a lot of people won't know what the advantage of a Roth is. 
the Roth is uh, good because it's after-tax income, and no matter how much money you make on it, you don't have to pay tax ever again, right? Correct. Correct. In the future, when you take out, when you're 59 and a half and you start taking out withdrawals, you can take it out. It's completely, the growth is tax-free. So if you make $2 million in your Roth because you invested beautifully, uh, you don't have to pay tax on that $2 million. Correct. It's a great deal. Absolutely great deal. It's a super, super powerful account. So you want to do that with the money you're making. So there's 25000 of your pre-tax income going into those accounts. And then the rest of it, you know, you can keep house hacking. Mm-hmm. So you can take that, you know, you could buy your first investment property, mm-hmm. you know, with, with that extra cash that you're saving in a place like Austin. And then you can do the same thing and buy your second investment property. So now you have three properties in Austin that you're getting rent and likely some positive cash flow from. Mm. And the thing is, you've reached financial independence when you have enough rental income to cover your expenses. Sure. So with two or three properties in a place like Austin, you can be, mm-hmm. you know, 34 years old, 29 mm-hmm. years old and be mm-hmm. completely set up for life. Right. Because your rental income, and then you don't need millions of dollars. You have three properties that are covering the cost of your life, mm-hmm. and that's all you need. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so mm-hmm. it's like so. you could, and if you keep working, then you could keep buying more properties, which would stress me out. I don't want uh, like a huge real estate portfolio. Or then you can invest it in stocks. So then yeah. you have just a mixture of real estate and, and stocks. stocks. And but what you happens know, if you just, if you get married and have kids? Then you're just then you're just screwed. No, I mean, then you just factor them and factor them into the plan. Um, but if you're if you're setting yourself up before you do that, I mean, you have so many advantages. Oh yes, yes, so many you know, advantages. You've built the find the foundation, um, and it's just about being mindful. You know, mm-hmm. um, you know, adding a spouse shouldn't add that much more expense. But ki- kids are another kids are another variable that. I mean, I see every day people who are doing this with, you know, two, three, four kids. Mm-hmm. It's just you have to, you have to, you know, with all this, you just have to choose to live a little, live a little bit differently than most people. And you have to get the kids on the program of learning to live, uh, because they're the first ones. You know, when you raise kids, you have kids. No, I don't okay. have kids yet. Well, close. Well, okay. Well, <laughs> when they come along, you're going to see that they're the drivers of status purchases. You know, that they, they got to have, they get it from the other kids, they get it from cartoons. Uh, all over the place, they get this notion that they've got to have Disney this, and they've got to have the best, and they've got to go to the, you know, the best movies. And so it's it's quite a struggle to fight against that because they become the most powerful persuaders in the world, these little ones. And that's why if you've set your life up and you have these income streams, mm-hmm. you know, it just becomes, a, you know, they become another expense category. Mm-hmm where you can still give them all those things within reason because mm-hmm. um, you've built it into your into your you know, setup. Well, and certainly if you educate them uh, or re-educate them <laughs> against the, the influences of the media world around them as you go, then, of course, you can have control. But if you, if you uh, give in to all their whims, then uh, you're, you're lost. Yeah, ab- absolutely. Absolutely. Now, who have you advised? Give me a success story where you've uh, helped someone, or at least you've given them the the advice, and they're on the right track, and you're you're proud of of how their life has turned around. Oh, there's so many. Um, I mean, the ch- the fun thing for me now is I'm 34, mm-hmm. and so I've been writing about this now for about four years, mm-hmm. and so I have case studies of people who started reading me in 2015 who now email me. <laughs> and I just got an I just got an email from a 25 year old uh, who lives in like the Portland Oregon area. Yeah. And he started reading he started reading my blog when he was a senior in college, and he just emailed me and he already has four properties. <laughs> oh. <laughs> There's four properties. He was like, oh, I just I've, I just became financially independent last week. I'm 25. You know. <laughs> and you're like, gosh, that's incredible. <laughs> or like a uh, a 16 year old emailed me. Uh, Recently, he's been 16? reading the blog for 16? 16. Oh, 16. that's great. That's great. He's been reading the blog for a year, and he emailed me, and he's like, oh, my side hustle. He's making like $12,000 a month <laughs> selling these T-shirts online. He's uh-huh. 16. Twelve thousand. I'm just like, wow. Twelve thousand a month. Wow. And I'm just like, I, I just, I can't even, you know, I get these emails. Like for the first time in my life now at 34, I'm like, there's, there's totally a generation now after me, you know. Uh-huh. 
and they're the ones who are t- like that's the really fun thing is because I there's like you know 21 year olds 20 year olds who are reading mm-hmm. this book there was like a 11 year old who reached out to me last week who's reading the book and I'm like you all are so far ahead <laughs> <laughs> anyway which is exciting it is, is exciting, super yes. exciting. But I but I also get emails from you know like I got one from a 52 year old firefighter in Bozeman, Montana, mm-hmm. uh, and he's you know, he's one of these stealth readers who's been reading the blog for about a year and a half, uh-huh. and then he emailed me and he's like, I saved thirty one thousand dollars last year and it was the first time I ever saved in my life. Oh and, my goodness! You know now not having you know I thought I was never going to be able to retire mm-hmm. you know even with my pension. And, you know, I'm 52 and I'm saving this much. And now I think I can do this in five years. Um, I get ton, tons of emails like that. They're, they're really, man, they, they make me so happy. They make me so happy. Well, you have empowered their lives in ways that they would have never gotten to. Otherwise, you brought great joy into their lives. Yeah, that's the gift, man. That's mm-hmm. the thing I couldn't, you know, you talked about kind of finding your purpose and mm-hmm. That's the thing. This whole five years that I was doing this, mm-hmm. you know, m- all I focused on was making and saving money. Like that was my number one goal. And I couldn't have anticipated. But in 2016, I started getting, you know, the emails from readers mm-hmm. uh, that were you know, like we're talking about. You helped me save 13000 You helped me do this. You saved my marriage. All these emails, they filled me with a level of joy that was beyond any dollar that I'd made. Wow. And that's where my purpose uh my purpose showed up. So this is and, uh, this is what Campbell calls your bliss. Is this? Oh, totally. This is to- this is what I was am here to do, and so now it makes it more fun because now I'm driven by a mission. I'm not driven by money, and so I don't have to make the trade offs. I mean, sometimes I make money, but it's like writing this book. You know, it took me two thousand eight hundred hours, and it's like you make like a dollar. You make like a dollar a book or two dollars yeah. a book. You yeah, know, you but you're. Make- you're in the you're in the top one percent on Amazon already, so that's that's damn good. Yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. then you just but that, but it's fun because you know now it's like I've had, you know it's, it's like I've gotten emails from people in over fifty countries and oh my you know this is wow. spreading worldwide that's and it's really fun. It's really it's just beautiful. I mean, I just feel very grateful to be able to help yeah. others. You know, it's just it's it's a real blessing, man. Well, we only have two minutes. Uh, tell me how to find your blog. Uh, so the best place to start, I'd recommend people check out the book before okay. the blog, actually. Okay. So financialfreedombook.com mm-hmm. or just Financial Freedom on Amazon, mm-hmm. the bright blue book. Um, that is like 10x what the blog has. The blog, you can go deeper on some topics. There's a okay. lot more about side hustling on the blog, and that's millennialmoney.com. But, yeah, check out the book. is the best place to start. Yeah, it's a very good read. Very good read. It's smooth. It has lots of good examples, great graphics, uh, uh, a beautiful logic, easy to follow. Unlike a lot of financial books that lose you, this one takes you by the hand and walks you through. I loved it. The book is Financial Freedom, Proven Path to All the Money You Will Ever Need by Grant Sabatier. Pick it up today. It's wonderful. Thank you, Grant, for joining us. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. I hope you have a great day. Thank you. Again, the name of the book is Financial Freedom, The Proven Path to All the Money You Will Ever Need. Grants about the A. You can get it on Amazon.com. For Good Books Radio, I'm your host, W.F. Strong, and it's been my pleasure to be the host today. And here's hoping, as always, that all your books are good reads. <laughs>